Okay, continuing on with section 1-5, now we're going to do graphs of sideways parabolas. Like a cagney with a spoon. Well, maybe you'll like it more when we get done it. Okay, so we know from section 1-3 that equations in the form y equals x plus h squared plus k are parabolas with vertex points at negative hk. Okay, that's back in section G 1-3, I think. Then uh, equations in the form x equals a times y plus h squared. I could have had an a in front of this one too. But my point is this h and this k. Okay, look at where the vertex point is when it's solved for y and the x is squared. It's at negative hk. And when it's solved for x and the y part is squared, it's at the point k negative h. Okay, see how that goes? k negative h. Negative hk, a typical format. Solve for y, k negative h. When it's solved for x, so what do you think? Uh, pretty easy to remember? Cool. Yep, not, not bad at all. Okay, so let's do this example. For this equation, x equals 3 times the quantity y minus 4 squared plus 5, what is the location of the vertex point? And does the parabola open up or down or right or left? Well, see the y is squared, not the x. This type of parabola up here where the x is squared is a parabola that opens up or down. Look at the sign in front. If the sign is positive, it opens up. The sign is negative in front of here, negative coefficient, whatever, opens down. Well, here it's solved for x and the y is squared. That's going to be a parabola that opens up to the right or left. Think of the right as being the positive direction. So this leading coefficient here is positive. So this is going to be a sideways parabola that opens to the right-hand side. Now, where's the vertex point at? Okay, let's take a look here. When they're in this form right here, then the vertex point is at k, negative h. So this vertex is going to be at 5. See, that's playing the role of k. 5 and the opposite of h. The opposite of negative 4 is 4. So it's actually going to be a vertex point at the, at the point 5, 4. Okay? And then it would be a, par a parabola opening up to the right on there. Now, that's what it's going to look like. So let's see if we can graph this with Excel. If, uh, if we want to graph this type of thing, then what we need to do is go to the sheet called conics. Now, when we go to that conics thing, we have to foil this thing together. So let's go ahead and take care of that. If we take the y minus 4 squared, we would get y squared minus 4y and another minus 4y gives us minus 8y. Minus 4 squared is 16. Then take the 3 through and then add the 5. So taking the 3 through would give us 3y squared. 3 times minus 8 is minus 24y. And 3 times the 16 is plus 48, then plus the 5. And then combine the like terms here at the end. And we get x equals 3y squared minus 24y plus 53. Now we've got to take every term to the left-hand side. You could leave the constant over there if you wanted to. But we'll take everything over to the left-hand side. And we would get this right here. Let me hit enter here so you can see this good. We would get x, take this over, minus 3y squared, take the minus 24y over, so plus 24y, take the plus 53 over, and you get minus 53. Now, the sheet that you go to is the conic sheet, and you'll see a section like this on the Excel sheet. So the a would be 0, the b would be 1, okay, because that's the number in front of that x. The c, no constant here, so 0. The d would be minus 3. Then a 24, and then let's see what we're up to here. Then the constant here is minus 53, and then on the right-hand side we got 0. If you put those into the conic sheet, and I think I have them in right here on the conic sheet, and that's where I am. And this is real close to the start of the conic sheet. You've got distance, circles, and then boom. Right here they'll graph all this stuff. You can see what the graph of this looks like. And the vertex point, I, let's see, where does it say? Here's the vertex point, 5, 4. And there's a graph of this thing. It's not a function because the vertical line hits it more than two uh, points right there. But you got your sideways parabola looking thing. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. For this equation, x equals negative 2y squared plus 4y minus 3. What is the location of the vertex point and does the parabola open up, down, right, or left? Well, again, it's solved for x, the y is squared, so it's going to open up to the right or to the left. Okay. Now, since the leading coefficient is negative, that means it's going to open to the left, to the left, okay? So this is going to be a parabola that opens up like this, okay, to the left, like that. And where's the vertex point? 
Well, it's not in that perfectly squared form that we can just pull off the vertex point, but uh, we do have Excel to pull it off for us here. So what we can do is, here's the format we're looking for. So we have to take all these terms right here to the left-hand side. So taking this over, we get plus 2y squared. Taking the plus 4y over, we get minus 4y. And taking the minus 3 over, we get plus 3. So it would be what all this junk here equals 0. And then at this point, we just go to our conics sheet and put in our coefficients. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me scroll up here a little bit so you can see the equation and type it in at the same time. So let me shrink this down. And here we go. So my A is the number in front of the x squared, which there isn't any, so that's 0. My B is in front of the x, which is 1, 1x one right there. My C is no constant here with the x's. My D is 2. So let's put in a 2 right here. The E is a minus 4. The F is 3. And the constant on the other side is 0. And now if we take a look at this thing, let's take a look at it, and we see that here's the vertex point. It's at negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And we can see the vertex point right here at negative 1, 1, okay, opening to the left. Not a function, but it does open to the left. There's a vertex point at negative 1, 1. So that's one way of doing it. We could also do this problem uh, by using the vertex point formula. Okay, here's a paper pencil way right here. And what we do is, uh, well, up here is the original problem. Let's see, the original problem right here. And I don't know if you remember this, but when they were solved for y, we could get the vertex point by taking a negative b over 2a. So negative of this, negative 4 over 2 times negative 4. Uh, sorry, 2 times negative 2. So negative b, negative 4 over 2 times negative 2. We're doing that right here, negative b over 2a. So that would be negative 4 over 2 times negative 2, which is 1. So 1 would actually be the y part of the vertex point, okay? Because that's what we have here in the, in the independent variable. Just like when we did negative b over 2a before, when it was solved for y, that told us the x part. Well, now it's telling us the y part of the vertex point. Now, to get the x part of the vertex point, just substitute that back in. Just substitute that 1 back in there for y, and you'll get the x part of the vertex point to be negative 1. Now, that isn't too bad. There's another way to find the vertex point, and that's called completing the square. And that is not fun at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. So we could complete the square. Complete the square is a method to rewrite quadratic equations in a, in a, from standard form to general form, you know, to that parentheses way. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is factor out the leading coefficient of the first two terms. Leading coefficient is negative 2. You've got to factor that out. So factoring out the negative 2 will give us negative 2 times the quantity y squared minus 2y, then minus 3. Now what you have to do is take half of this term. Okay, half of that negative 2 is negative 1. Square it. Square negative 1 is 1, and you have to add that on and subtract it off to keep it equal. So take half of negative 2 is negative 1. Squared is 1. So add on the 1 and take off the 1. Are you confused yet? Can't blame you. There's other ways of doing it, which, is, which I think are easier up above, but we'll finish this off here. The reason you do that is because this bit right here is a perfect square. This will always factor into y then whatever half of that middle term was. What was half that middle term? Minus 1. So it's going to factor into y minus 1 squared. And then what do you have left over here? Well, minus 2 times minus 1. Well, I'll leave it in here. Minus 2 times that minus 1, minus 3. Now you combine those. Minus 2 times that minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. So now it's in that perfectly squared form. And so the vertex point will be at k negative 1, then negative h. So that would be 1. Negative 1, 1. I think that's what we got here. Negative 1, 1. So that's, uh, well, you know, you pick your way of doing this, either the Excel way or by the vertex formula way or by completing the square. And next we're going to go into graphs of circles.